The home addresses of 31,000 registered sex offenders in Illinois are supposed to be listed on a state website, so you can see if they're in your neighborhood. Trouble is, we found many of those addresses are flat out bogus. CBS 2's Megan Hickey investigates how so many could slip through the cracks. You had no idea that you had a, a registered sex offender no, living. No, idea at all. no. This right neighbor no, had no clue. Scary. How could she? The convicted sex offender in her Palatine apartment building registered this address in Chicago, which doesn't exist. 60606, that's the Willis Tower. His fake neighbor, who also registered a non existent 60606 address, this man who was convicted of sexually abusing a 16-year-old. When we tried looking for him under the correct zip code, we ended up here. Hello? He's not listed, but the address is less than 500 feet from an elementary school, which isn't allowed. Next stop, 69 West Washington, the Cook County Administration Building, and home to the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. And according to Henry Lewis, it's his home, too. Suite 122. So he says that he lives here. He's a sex offender and he registered this address. Does anyone even live in this building? No, this is all office building. That's all <laughs> it is. It's, it's, no, nobody lives here. So does that make any sense to you? No, that don't make no sense at all. And the How security guard told me to Suite 122, address? that's also fake. Here's a stumper. One offender got away with registering a P.O. box. That's as close as it gets. No surprise, we didn't find him there. Another offender lives on Hatred Street in Evanston. Nope, not a real street. So how are these addresses making the cut? We asked the Attorney General's office and they referred us to Illinois State Police. Illinois State Police acknowledge that they maintain the database, but tell us the list is only as good as the data entered in by local law enforcement, the county sheriff, or the Illinois Department of Corrections. And those groups referred us back to ISP. ISP then goes as far as putting a disclaimer on its website warning that, quote, ISP makes no representation, express or implied, that the information contained on the registry is accurate. So that's when we took our questions to the U.S. Department of Justice. A P.O. box would never be an acceptable address for a sex offender. The director of SMART, the Sex Offender Sentencing, Monitoring, Apprehending, Registering and Tracking Office, told us that to date, Illinois hasn't fully implemented federal guidelines for sex offender notification and registration. The red and yellow highlight problem areas. That's why the states received a funding penalty every year since 2011. And some of the solutions to verifying addresses are pretty simple. So you're saying it could be as easy as just Googling it? It, it could be. I mean, we have so many great technological features these days. There's no reason why you can't just Google that house address and see that it's actually a house address versus a post office box. One of the 17 states that does follow the federal guidelines is Ohio. So we asked their attorney general about it. He had a few critiques. Illinois lacks a way to uh, and be able to consistently notify people by email or to update people that are interested. He said notification and address verification have been priorities for the Buckeye State. They send postcards to verify that addresses are real. It's not hard at all to send out a batch of postcards and see what comes back. This stuff is not hard to do. It's not especially expensive. I would just urge people to buckle down and, and get it done. Meanwhile, residents are asking, who else could be lying about where they live? It's scary, you know, because we have to take precautions, you know. Scariest of all, no one seems to know who's accountable for all these wrong addresses. Megan Hickey, CBS 2 News. And we asked to speak with a representative from the Illinois Sex Offender Registry Team through the Illinois Attorney General's Office and State Police. That request was denied. Megan will keep pushing on this.